Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Mind Over Magic. So today we will finally get into the under school. I will cover the whole combat shenanigans and all the things that you need to know about that. So first of all I have prepared all the resources that we require and I also have pretty much prepared everything that I feel like it's necessary for your first trip into the underschool. Among these I also upgraded finally the assembly hall into a proper assembly hall. This was just two solemn pedestals put back into the background here. That's all it took. The reason why I want to have this is only as an assembly hall you can retire staff. Retiring staff is sometimes just very very necessary when you're may just get too beaten up and get too insane it might be a good idea to be able to release them and since combat puts quite the strain on your people it's really good to have this prepared before it bites your back so we got that i also fetched up a couple of extra chests so we have now lots of capacity down here i didn't configure them in any way i trust the ai to just bunker down everything down here that we require this is by no means efficient uh, and in every form, any form efficient, but it is still something that will get anything out there safe from the rain. And that is all that we require in the beginning. Efficient storage, we can still do later, no props. Okay, so let's unlock the under school as the first thing. You require wormweed pod, phoenix flower, viscera, two staff and two students. So we're going to add these ingredients into the magical concoction and then the ritual will begin to unlock the fun zone. While that is happening we're taking a look outside on these wonderful foggy crystals. We want to mine these because these guys have all the stuff that we require. For one they can drop wands, so it's really good to have just something that drops wands. They can also drop a food that makes Darn happy, but most importantly they drop healing potions and mana potions, and these are really, really useful resources down there. So, the ritual has been completed, and now we have the first room down here unlocked. And we can now start exploring the school. But before we do so, let's take a look at the combat system and how it works before you get started and get yourself beaten. So, selecting a mage and going into magic and combat opens up this screen here. So we see the HP, the maximum mana, the power, that's basically the strength, the bonus damage that will be put onto your spells, speed, and death saves, how many times a person can be beaten down before they actually die. We see here the rank of their primary magic school and their skills that come according uh, to the skill there and the wand. Every mage only has the abilities linked to his main wand. Every mage will still acquire skills from the remaining magic schools, but these will be only used for work. The actual spell casting and fighting will always be dependent on the main wand. So here if we check it out we have a uh, debuff spell and an attack and a attack that deals way more damage if being cast from the back row. So we already know that Penelope wants to sit in the back row. We got now Isadora our fire mage offering a retaliation bonus for an entire row which reflects damage back to the attacker and a fireball with a crit chance. Apart from that, we can see here that the HP values and the mana values fluctuate a bit. Speed is very valuable too, as this makes you act faster. And I also want to point out that different races have different bonuses. So Vivified have high HP, as you uh, can read in the tooltip, and humans have an extra speed bonus. So there's always something, some advantage to be a certain type of uh, species. So humans also come with an extra death save and wolfkin as far as i remember yeah high speed so there's a lot of different things that goes on for these so we have two people that want to sit in the back row and here i want to look at a student so dakota 
is not eligible to cast the uh, torrent spell because she's not at spell casting rank three yet. She has to learn that burst in her spell lessons. Whereas Cortez is already finished with his learning. He could graduate already, but we're going to keep him for a while. The real big difference is that a student can have zero death saves. So if they get beaten down, they're lost for good. But students are easily replaceable and the power of your fighter is strongly dependent on the um, on the wand and whether they are a gifted person or not. So we're going to go and harvest a couple of these foggy crystals before we go downstairs. These are, like I said, a pretty good uh, source for resources. Let's see. Do we already have something? So we found wands. Where is it? Shouldn't these be here? Well, we don't seem to have any uh, potions yet, as they aren't being uh, shown in the list. So we're going to assign a super high priority on these. Maybe we are lucky. Maybe we aren't. We'll see about that. Honeyed Gruel. That is uh, also can also be really really useful as the uh, really good food is uh, right now hard to come by. And here we have found a rug, smoke pearl, but obviously we were unlucky in terms of drops, as I see, or I'm overlooking something. Sometimes I get very blind while I'm recording, so please forgive me with that. I'm not doing that on purpose or anything like that. So, you can absolutely go and start another Repel Fog ritual before you go there. And what I also want to point out, it's really good to have a backup of wands and uh, scrolls and uh, the Adept scrolls I'm talking about and enough wood and gut berry to perform another ritual just in case that something goes horribly wrong. You can of course always go and save scum and I would strongly recommend you to save and reload if necessary. The game right now is an early access and therefore there are really some funky encounters there where I feel like these really need to be rebalanced as they feel horrible when you experience them, but don't you worry, that is on the higher difficulty and not on the low difficulty and where we're currently at. So let's try out the last of these smoke crystals and see if we are getting lucky and finding something that we require. I know that I'm a tad bit of an over-preparer, but you can cho choose to your own liking how you want to prepare, uh, how you want to go for a bad. The Really, there's no need to to hurry or rush yourself in this game, as things are around. You're in, you're safe as long as you can perform those rituals. But luckily, we have found a couple of potions. There we go. We found greater rejuvenation and regular rejuvenation. These can be crafted later down the road, but currently we we cannot make them ourselves as we don't have any alchemist's table available. So I am going to fast forward this video until the next morning for these blokes as I want them to have a good night's sleep before we go into the whole combat section. All right, so it's the morning after the night and everybody is taking up their breakfast and everything. I would recommend to let your uh, adventurers do their uh, morning routine before you sent them downstairs. It is really important to mention that people that go into combat will suffer damage and being wounded will make them uh, lose conviction and therefore you should always try to choose accordingly. So maybe you don't want to send somebody adventuring who's already pretty much on the brink to madness or be prepared to just release them if necessary. All right, so let's get finally started we go and explore. So, checking out how your character skills work 
must be done currently before you go into the uh, encounter screen. I'm pretty sure this will be fixed along the early access, but currently it is as it is. So we put the water mages into the back line because these guys have spells that act stronger if they are cast out of the back line. So that's really important. We're also going to bring the uh, rejuvenation potions. As you see here, we can bring up to 10 potions and always leave that check mark up because you don't want to go into battle without four mana. You just don't. That is uh, never a good idea. So we're going to refill our staves and like I said, try to save the game before you do this, and well, probably save before you go them there, uh, go down there. But you still can't cancel, because like I said, you never know what will happen, and there is no necess no necessity to play this Iron Man. Okay, so now up here we have the timeline. We can see when we act and when the baddies act, so we have a pretty precise readout about what's going to happen. Down here we can select the spells that we want to use. We see how much HP and how much mana everybody has. If you mouse over the people, you get a highlighter on who that's supposed to be. We can cast spells, we can use items, we can move and switch places with people, we can decide to flee or we can decide to pass our action. If you pass your action, you will regenerate some mana. If you don't have any mana anymore, usually you can only pass your action or just use an item. That's just what it is. So we're going to use the power of the back row attacks and in this scenario I will try to apply as much damage to well, to the first one, because there is a low probability that we're going to kill this guy So before he can act. So my plan is to kill this guy before he can act a second time. I think if we focus our attacks all on one target, this might be possible. Either way, try to focus down a single target. Right now, all enemies will be unknown to you, so later you will understand which enemies are smarter to focus. If you don't know anything, try to go for some criteria. You could also go for lowest HP, like I'm trying to go for something in the speed order. Decide to your own liking. So we're going to go and lower the enemy's power with the soak. That's a very costly spill, but we delayed the action of that person even and we can put a retaliate on our front row attacks usually most of the time are aimed at onto the front row and therefore look at that profit okay so we can now use our earth mage to use a earth armor applying armor and taunt to the caster so i'm going to apply that uh, to my high hp guy Taunt does what you would uh, assume it does, and armor is temporary HP. That will just uh, get the job done. So we didn't really burst down the target yet, but we will be now. So, mission accomplished. First target down, and that is pretty good. All right, let's lay down a fireball. And you see here, the attack gets uh, smacks into the armor. We still have taunt open, so we can cast a smash. There we go. And the rest is easy pickings. So if you are well prepared, this is uh, actually really, really, really easy. But if you're not, you can easily uh, lose your head about that. What you're after are these arcane scrolls. That's exactly the kind of material that you want. You also see that there's a couple of extra resources and new things get unlocked the deeper you go into the underschool. So there's always some new things happening when you, when you explore new things. And we also unlock new areas that we can work about. So, medical rest is now necessary for Isadora, who luckily was the only person wounded. That is really good, I guess that means only one of our staff needs to rest up until he's back on his feet. That's exactly what we've been looking for. So, the underschool is an interesting and fascinating place. For example, this underschool chamber here is a configurable room. You, you can use this to whatever you want to as 
you can actually define it as one of these rooms if you meet the necessary keywords. So we can now explore deeper into the um, into the school, which we will, and this is really, really necessary and mandatory to do so. But the first thing we got to do is wait until Isadora is back on his slash her feet. I, I can't help but this looks like a male, but the name is female. This is really a little bit weird. I can only assume that right now we have a um, no female models yet. That's what I'm assuming. So these might come later. So medical rest, I will put that now on top notch priority. So wounded people will stop working. And I want to show you here how this looks like in the convictions area. So in pain, that is you have a constant minus 10 as long as the person is still injured. And without a medical bed, the injury would never subside. So, chest smashers. This is basically something... Oh, here it is. This is a battle that we have to start as it will start smashing our chests. As you can see here, our uh, staff is currently acting against that, but we're going to take that battle as Isadora is hopefully healed up far enough to get uh, to get into battle again, and we're going to take down that thing. But first, everybody has to recharge their mana. And this is why I keep saying that being well prepared is so darned uh, important in this game. There we go. It's just a singular enemy, so it shouldn't be too hard. We're going to use uh, Soak once more to lower the enemy's power and speed. This is a really nice trick from Water Mages. Water Mages are really, really powerful in the back row. So let's keep the vengeance up. And as you see here, this guy is actually attacking the back row and not the front row. So we're still going to use the same same old, same old thing here. Earth armor goes up, and now we're going to torrent that guy until he is no more. So the higher the magic level of your mages, the better spells and abilities they have available. The higher the power, the more impact they got. And yeah, that's pretty much what you are after. Here now we have four people needing medical rest at once, but we only have one medical bed available. In this scenario, you see they will take turns. People will just uh, take that uh, one after another. But like I said, everybody in the school has now a bad mood because of that. So that's why I personally think it's super important that you get yourself as many medical beds as you um can until you hit four total as this is in my humble opinion the number bad where it's sufficient you know there are four people in your adventurous party so most likely there will be four people needing to rest afterwards technically more more could be useful if you have uh two parties raiding in uh, raiding one after another or whatever but uh realistically Four medical beds are already a pretty heavy investment, and two are perfectly fine for for starters. You no need to go too crazy here, as the Phoenix Flower is a really, really nasty little bugger that tends to hang around all of the buildings that you want to have. Good lighting, Phoenix Flower, and medical bed, Phoenix Flower, unlocking underschool, Phoenix Flower. So there are so many uh, things that this stuff is needed for that, yeah, you don't want to spend it too, easy, too eagerly, and therefore I think two medical beds are where I'll leave it, I'll leave the rest up to you, as you can play that as you want. Such is the nature of sandbox games, and that is just what's so good about it. So, speaking about what's so good about it, let's get into the research menu. We have just pilfered arcane scrolls. So, we get adept scrolls for graduating and retiring people. These adept scrolls are needed for 
hiring new people, and our King Scrolls are for new technologies. So this is where we can unlock better and more shiny technologies. So there's the downside that we need to decide for something which is in all honesty quite hard so there are so many different choices that you can go for we're not going to spend any of the arcane scrolls in this episode i want to explore all the different options that we got in the upcoming episode or today i had another thing that i wanted to head in toward and that is delightful compos decomposition and grave thoughts. So grave thoughts should be unlocked as well. We didn't build a grave yet, but it is uh, really, really important that you have the graves available. Where are they actually? Ah, gardening, of course, how intuitive. So graves are a necessary evil if somebody died in your uh, school you should you better take care of uh, their remains okay so we now will unlock as the next thing the delightful decomposition which is refining beasts but that is uh, pretty much a topic that i will postpone into the next episode as well we are pretty uh, well off right now we have students that want to retire slash being recruited right now. The usual things. I will end today's episode a tad bit earlier as I have explained what I wanted to explain. We can now go adventuring and we should go as much adventuring as we can. Those one skull um, fights aren't too hard, especially if you have a couple of healing potions in your backhand. This party here, as you see, is working out a charm and we can easily raid more spaces. We just need to take care that nobody goes insane and nobody is too beaten up while you're doing so. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the things you can do in terms of further expansion and further technology development and where you need to go and what the next um, bigger milestones are. Until then, I wish you a lot of fun exploring the underschool, exploring more and more rooms that you can, like I said, use for expansionary purposes as well. Feel free to leave comments. Feel free to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the episode. The algorithm would surely approve. And of course, consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did so. There's also the description box waiting down there for you with links to the playlist for this uh, whole tutorial series, my Discord server if you want to chat, out, uh, chat and hang out, and of course there's also Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee. I'd be delighted if you'd support the channel, and a big, big thanks to all of you who already do. I couldn't do this all without the help of, with, of you fine, fine people, and a big, big thanks to you watching this video right now until the very end, and I just appreciate people that watch the video even through the ad rolls through everything and thanks it's really nice of you so have a wonderful day and see you all next time bye bye